Hi everyone, my name is Mrs. McCrary and this is the first part of the first unit. So this unit is called Scientific Foundations of Psychology. In this particular video, we'll cover just the first section, conducting psychological research. So to start with, why do we need to rely on research if psychology studies things like personality and memory and perception? Can't we just rely on our own intuition? And the short answer is no, we do need research. And here are some pitfalls. And I'm gonna move my picture here so you can see them there at the bottom. So there are three pitfalls and we are susceptible to these as humans. We are, we just can't trust our gut. Um, um, and the reason is hindsight bias, overconfidence, and perceived order in random events. So the first one is hindsight bias, which is just the idea that I knew it all along. We have the tendency to believe after learning an outcome that we could have known it all along. Think about after the Super Bowl, everyone knew that that pass shouldn't have been made, of course, but that's after the fact. Um, a really good example from the textbook, from the Myers textbook is that half of the members of a group, if they get some supposed evidence from some psychological finding, and then you give another group the other half of the group a different result, an opposite result, what you'll find is most of the groups will get those findings and then both will report, oh, of course, I knew that finding would happen when one of them was obviously false. So if you told the first group, um, psychologists have found that um, separation weakens romantic attraction. And then you tell the other group, oh, out of sight, out of mind. And you ask them, do you think that this is true? And most people on both sides would be like, of course, like that makes sense. If you're apart, then of course you're going to, you know, have your romance grow. You're going to have to, you know, build that relationship. And then you ask the other group, of course, if they're separated, they're going to fall apart. And so, um, it just, it, it's just a pitfall. It's just because we, we tend to, um, get that information and then we try to see how it could possibly work. We kind of fit in our, our hindsight by this. We know that it's true. And so therefore we think, oh, I could have predicted that when we probably couldn't have. The next pitfall is overconfidence and, Ultimately, overconfidence just reminds us that we can't rely on our own intuition. Um, as humans, we tend to think that we are uh, more correct and uh, we're actually not. So we're more confident in ourselves than we are correct. Uh, a great example of this is from a 1978 study that used anagrams. And so you can see those anagrams on the screen. Richard Gorenson was the researcher and he gave this, this set of anagrams to participants and you can see here were the scrambled words and here were the solved words. So he asked them, looking at these anagram sets, how long do you think it would take you if you were given this set of scrambled letters to come up with these words? And what he found is most people on average thought it would take them looking at these scrambled letters that it would take them about 10 seconds. So I want you to think how long it might take you. And what he found was when he actually had people solve them without looking at the answers, it took an average of, of about three minutes. And so um, what he found was people tended to be more confident in themselves than they actually were correct. And so here's a really good example if you wanna write this scrambled letter set on your paper and see how long it takes you to unscramble it. I'll give you some letters and then you can start a stopwatch and see how long it'll take you to figure out the word. So the letters are O, C, H, S, A. All right, did you get it? Pause the video if you don't want me to tell you the answer, but the answer is chaos. So I wonder how long it took you. Um, probably it took you longer than you thought. Another psychologist, he, um, his name is Philip Tetlock and he studied um, this same idea of overconfidence. He surveyed over 20 
7,000 people who are considered experts in world events, and he asked them to predict some things about future world events. And he found that the people, they believed they were going to be about 80% correct. And then in actuality, when those things played out, he ended up finding out that they were less than 40% correct. So the issue with us relying on our own intuition is one, hindsight bias, two, overconfidence, and three, we have a tendency to perceive order when there might not actually be order. So um, finally, we come to this uh, perceived order in randomness. And so uh, we need psychological research to let us know if correlations are really correlations or if a prediction is, is really true. And so here's a really good example on the left side. Um, if you see like suppose I flipped a coin six times and what I want you to think about is if I flipped a coin six times and then we had a, se a series of heads tails heads tails what do you think most likely would be the order that I would receive would it be heads 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 tails 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 heads tails tails head tails heads or six heads in a row now, you might be thinking, well, it's probably number two. That's going to be more likely to occur when in actuality, all three of these are equally likely. But we have a tendency to perceive just to perceive something that might not necessarily be true, where we might have a tendency to perceive some kind of um, you know, pattern or streak, or maybe we think something is going to occur. If I see this, maybe I think if it goes heads, 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 tails, 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 then what's going to come next is a heads. Um, but really, it's it's random. And so um, something just to remember is that um, we just have a tendency to think that um, patterns are happening when sometimes it is random. Um, another really good example is this over here, figure 4.1. Um, you can see these are two random sequences and your chances of being dealt either of these hands are the same when we might think that we would be more likely to get this kind of hand. So um, we just have a tendency to think that there might be some kind of order when it maybe something is just random. And so the point to remember is that hindsight bias, overconfidence, and our tendency to perceive patterns in random events sometimes leads us astray and we over overestimate our intuition. And so that's why we need scientific inquiry. Okay, next, how is research conducted? So psychologists use a scientific method, which is just a process for evaluating their ideas. They use observation and analysis, and they take plausible theories and then they put them to the test, they create a prediction or a hypothesis, and then they test it to see if if this idea is really if if this idea is really what they believe it to be. And so what they're trying to find out is if this prediction has validity. And then they'll replicate it over and over again and see if they continue to get similar results. Or if the predictions fail, then they know that, that they need to revise and then maybe reject the, the hypothesis that they made. So we will have a whole separate video or I will make a whole separate video on the scientific method. But for now, let's just talk about some ways that data can be collected. So there are three ways data collection can occur. So one is through case studies. Case studies are an analysis of a specific individual. There's also naturalistic observations where someone is watching and recording natural behavior that's occurring. And then there's surveys or interviews. And I'll just go into each of these a little bit more deeply. A case study is a situation where a single individual is studied in depth and then conclusions are made about that person or that group and then that it's believed that the conclusions can reflect a whole population. Case studies are based on a single case. So for some reason that case study cannot or should not be replicated and so we will assume what happens to that person or that group can be applied to other people. 
A really great example of a case study is the historic case of Jeannie, and you can see her here. She was an adolescent girl who suffered severe neglect by her parents, and when she was taken in by social workers, um, she was worked with by speech and language therapists uh, with researchers, but they could never quite help her grasp language and grammatical structures, and it was believed that Jeannie possibly missed a critical period to hear language because of her severe neglect and that she was never really able to acquire um, the ability to understand language. And so that that idea, that finding has, has been applied to others, that this could happen to others in that situation, but it's not going to be tested or replicated. Another uh, that I just spoke about was the naturalistic observation. So just to go into that a little bit more deeply, this is just a method of research where you're not going to um, manipulate the situation. It's unobtrusive and you're watching the behaviors of animals or of people. Um, it's not going to explain the behavior, but it will describe the behavior. So it will reveal information by just watching something in their natural environment. And then finally, surveys. Surveys will help understand um, people's attitudes. So researchers do surveys when they want to estimate from a sample of people the attitudes of maybe a whole population. And they're going to be looking for things like attitudes and feelings and perceptions and asking people self-reporting questions. This information, if it's taken from an appropriate sample, then can reflect a larger population. But asking questions can be tricky, especially um, if it's dependent on maybe the wording of the question, sometimes even changing the wording of questions or the way the question is framed can affect the, the survey and the results. So what we've covered in this video was why we need research for psychological studies, why do we need to rely on psychological research instead of our own intuition, and how some of this research is conducted. I hope that was helpful.